Deputy Speaker, most South Africans who are upset and disappointed by what has been happening in Parliament are hoping that this debate will result in the oh, dignity the and decorum members, let's of this give institution this being restored. Chance. I, as one of the longest serving members of this House, would like to apologize to the nation for the deplorable conduct of Point some of the Honourable Minister, please hold on. Honourable members, this, the subject of this debate is about exactly the problem you are causing. You can't be screaming. <laughs> members, it's about you. You are making noise. No, no, no. Honorable members, I object. Your, your behavior is despicable. You can't be making noise and making these claims you are making here, man. There ought to be order here. Order. Oh, go on, Honorable uh, Mishra. I therefore want to appeal to all honorable members of this esteemed house to be more tolerant of each other's opinions as we seek to restore the image and credibility of this house. We must all take collective responsibility for what has been happening and allow constructive criticisms of ourselves, the President of South Africa, our speakers, and all presiding officers, as we seek solutions to what is a serious deterioration of a vital institution in holding our democracy together. The ACDP and all other members and citizens who truly love this nation do not want this house to continue deteriorating into a non-functioning state of paralysis. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, the ACDB believes that President Jacob Zuma is the first one that must accept the responsibility for the shocking state of this institution because he has failed to lead by example and to provide sound ethical leadership by being the first to take responsibility when it was needed the most. The bottom line is that the President has lost all credibility. Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa, as leader of government business, failed to instill discipline in cabinet ministers who deliberately evade or refuse to answer questions from members of parliament. When some members, cabinet members, treat members who ask questions with disdain, they provoke them to react improperly. Members of the executive must be reminded that it is the duty of MPs to hold them to account for how they spend taxpayers' money and run their departments. Deputy Speaker, on the 18th of November, 2014, the Deputy President, in his capacity as leader of government business, met with parliamentary leaders of all parties represented in this House to discuss the unacceptable events that were taking place in Parliament. We all made commitments to adhere to the agreements that were made that, in that meeting. The Deputy President promised to follow up with another meeting with leaders to assess progress, and that never happened. I sincerely believe that if agreements that were made were introduced in this House, some of which I will refer to in my closing remarks, and the Deputy President had held follow-up meetings with party leaders, what is happening today would not have happened and this debate would not have taken place. Like all of us, Madam Speaker and her team also carries the blame. On a number of occasions, the Speaker and other House chairs have made questionable and unfair rulings against opposition MPs. She protected members of the executive from scrutiny, resulting, for example, in the constitutional courts in Gandla finding that parliament had breached its constitutional duty of exercising oversight over the executive. Members of the opposition become frustrated when they see the speaker being biased against them in favor of members of the ruling party. The ACDP calls, therefore, on the speaker to ensure that rules are applied even-handedly and that order is restored in the House. To my fellow members, I want to ask that we respect ourselves and one another. We should respect our word and the agreements we make. Rules of Parliament are made by members themselves and should therefore be respected and abided by. Playing to the gallery by raising spurious points of order and refusing to abide by the rulings from the chair have left to chaos in the House and that must be strongly discouraged. Speaker, what happened in Parliament last week, on Tuesday, was both disgusting and heartbreaking. It was very sad to see members of Parliament, who should be role models, particularly to our youth, descend to such low levels of behavior towards the parliamentary security personnel that were sent in to escort them out of the House. 
televised footage showing EFF members kicking a female security officer who had fallen to the ground during the scuffle that ensued while trying to remove them from the house was utterly disgraceful and an all-time low for the decorum of this house. Our nation needs caring leaders who conduct themselves with integrity and know how to treat women and others with decency and respect. Honorable members, we owe it to ourselves as MPs and to the people of South Africa who we represent and serve to do whatever it takes to restore the dignity of the decorum of the House. Robust debate and passionately held views must be expressed within the bounds of common decency and the rules of this House. We must learn to hear each other to agree to disagree if necessary. Fully failing which the rules of parliament must be applied consistently and resolutely. Thank you.